Should we move that table right there? All right. This is your time right here to shine. Yeah, we're gonna have to do one side at a time. Okay, do that. So yeah, just keep that away. Ready? Okay. Yeah, okay. That's good. All right, guys, so it's day one of our week to Wicked. We've done an early Mustang. We've done a late model Mustang. This time we're doing a what? Fox body. He said it, Fox body. I personally have not built one of these, so we have some help. Behind us is the guys from Maxim Motorsport and what they're doing, they're prepping the subframe connectors now. And the reason we're doing this first is because we needed the car uh, loaded on the wheels so nothing's twisted, so the car stays true to itself. They're gonna get these welded in. From there, we're gonna get it over to our uh, two-post lift. Yeah. We're kind of, kind of, Happy. We got ourselves a uh, new toy over there, which I'll introduce you guys to uh, once we get over there. But for now, let's let these guys get back to work, get those welded in. That way we can get back on the suspension too. All right, so what we're doing now is we're just uh, prepping the subframe connectors, taking off the powder coat, that way they can weld them in. Right now, the guys in the background are working on the passenger side full length subframe connector. It's one of the first modifications we should be doing on a Mustang. Just helps stiffen up the chassis, get it ready for all the other modifications we're going to be doing. Making the suspension stiffer, putting some more power to the ground, hopefully going around some corners and having some fun. Wow. Watch your feet! All right, so the guys finished up the subframe connectors. The car's nice and stiff now. Um, we're going to bring it over to the two post lift. Disassemble everything so we have a foundation to start right with. That way we can get the front and rear suspension going. He's not around. It's ready. All right, it's ready. Down I don't want to drop on you. It's Go gotta, ahead. It looks like it's got to come below. Oh no, it can't. The steering, the steering goes right through it. Steering shaft goes through it. So we got to take the steering shaft off first. Oh. Sorry. All right, so Mark's over there and I'm over here and we are tearing down the car so we can get the engine out. Christian's taking the steering shaft off now. That way we can get the header out. The guys are in the back of Maxim Motorsport tearing down this rear suspension. So we're gonna go in the air, tear the tranny out and then lift the engine out and we're gonna be looking good. Let's see what we got here. Drop them off when we can take the rear end out. Taking a lot of the line. We can definitely do that. Yeah. So Jason's leaving the hard work for me. About normal. Pulling the rear springs out, um, then we can do the control arms and pull the whole rear end with the drive shaft out at one. Man, where's that big boy at? Woo! <laughs> ah, got it. Mmm, mm, take that. I lied, the tranny must be empty. <laughs> Not enough to drain out. We need a big one. Well, let's get the bigger gun. Wow. Better or no? No. That's all you needed. <laughs> <laughs> so our Week to Wicked Fox Mustang is basically a long-term project car, if you will. Uh, for the last 28 years, over roughly four or five different brands, we've used this car for various projects. So with the Week to Wicked build, it's finally a chance for me to take the car and basically start over with a clean slate and build it to do what I really want to do with the car, which is honestly a little bit of everything. A little autocross, a little bit of drag race, still be able to drive it every day as needed. It'd be a you know, solid running, reliable car. Well, you know, just trying to get this header out of this car that is almost impossible. I don't even know how it got in here. Magic. Oh, too bad. Bing. Now let's see if that did the trick. 
Oh, literally almost. I almost got it. <laughs> Let me get that set a little bit. Yeah, look at that. My man Drew over here. Oh, the other ones came right out. This is the one that Mark actually could get his hand on and tighten up. Huh, what? What was that? Huh? Oh, you don't want to come out of the car? Too bad. Too bad, bro. You okay? Oh, transmission's just whispering in my ear. That's just the trans fluid dripping into your ear. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. Now we drop and pull the engine out. Now we're having fun. Mm -hmm. Then take the K-member out. Are the engine uh, mounts? Yes, I take them off. You're I, good? I, I got them right here. You're a good kid. So. <laughs> we're like Joe Dirt, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right, so like I mentioned, we had a new toy installed in the shop. This is Drew. And he did the installation last week. And what we're talking about is this giant crane, which is going to help us tremendously when we're pulling out these engines. We're not using the forklift anymore or the old broken down hoist. So let's do this, man. Let's do it. All right, we got the snap track system here, half ton, all internal electric. Our boys over at Harrington Hoist hooked us up with a really sweet uh, two speed. Real quiet. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, man. Real quiet. Do you want to make sure that one's on the bolt? Yep. Okay, good there. We do these in eight, 12, and 20 foot length uh, rails. Comes in a kit, put it together in a weekend. Nice. Have you all set? Okay, good. looking good Let's there. Get here. You wanna grab an engine stand? We'll yeah, I'll grab there. something. Okay, so you have plenty of room. Oh yeah. I'll find your room. Perfect, go. she's in. Nice. Beautiful. We're just disconnecting the um, lines for the power steering. Okay, the trash can. Okay. There we go. I guess if we have the crane, we might as well use it. Yep. All right, Christian, hook it up. Oh, oh. whoa! Dang. Where did he come from? He's been from? waiting to do that all day. <laughs> wow. oh, oh, fuel oh. all over your face, huh? It is good. I'm gonna wash it if you want. The suspension that was on the car was a mismatch of different pieces. <laughs> you know, we've had drag race springs on it, we've had solid bushings, we've had urethane bushings, all sorts of stuff over the years. So, with the Maximum Motorsport suspension that we're installing, which starts with their grip box kit and then is custom tailored to our project, which is what they do with every customer. You give them a call and you tell them how much horsepower you're making, you know, what's tire size, the weight of the vehicle, your intended pr uh, project uh, purpose, and they tailor the kit. So that's exactly what they did for us, which is nothing special, it's the same thing they do for any customer. And once we have that system installed, whether we want to, you know, throw it into a corner at an autocross or we're gonna launch it at a drag strip, we know the car is gonna be predictable and do what we want it to do. All right, cool. You don't have the brains? There we go. Bam. <laughs> Gotta add the sound effects. This is their, uh, their torque arm. Bolts to the rear end and then Mounts down there at that end with another cross yeah. that we'll install in the car. That's pretty rad. Uh, all right. What'd you set him at? 220, baby. I watched out with my foot real quick uh. like a couple months ago. Whoa. It's classic. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so we're throwing on our EVC brake pads. Uh, Mark's giving them in. And as you can see yeah, here, they have a different variety of choices for upgrading your brakes. Take a look at that right there. Boom. 
अरे Sorry guys. So I found the place pretty good. Yep. Brack up. A little more. I'm not doing anything. I'm watching him put the shock in though. Okay. Why in the hell did we put the crack on there? Rent. Bring her down. Yeah. All right. All right, so day one is uh, wrapped up. Front suspension's in, brakes are on. The Maxim guys even got to the rear, hung the rear in, got the coilovers in. We need to do a little bit of welding up front for the torque arm. Other than that, it's gonna be pretty much wrapped up. So we're gonna get out of here tonight, get a little bit of rest. So thanks for watching, stay tuned tomorrow. All right, down a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of like stair stepping, you know. Stair stepping, Mark. <laughs> well, yeah, you know. Like... <laughs> Is that a Florida mingo? Actually, go all the way down. Let's just put the tank right there on that table. All right, so it's day two of our Mustang 360 week to Wicked, and behind us we got the suspension getting wrapped up. As yesterday was an exciting day getting all this Maxim Motorsport yep. suspension installed. Today's another big day. Oh. We have horsepower coming in and that is in Vortex. So they'll be here soon to install the supercharger to the engine. And I think Christian and I got a few things to do mm -hmm. on the fuel tank. Yep, we dropped it. We're gonna run some lines, more uh, fuel. Yep. So more and power. Pump. So with that being said, let's get out of here and get to work. Let's go. Mark was nice enough to bring us his car uh, as dirty as he could. <laughs> He's getting this all prepped up for a bigger pump, added horsepower, supercharger. We need to change the lines and uh, a bigger pump to feed uh, the engine for the added horsepower. Okay, we're good there. Just kind of figure out how to snake it out of there, and once you do, Suck. Oh God. Oh, that's dirty. That's gator water. Right I'll grab there. that. In there, doctor. Oh sh the gator in there. <laughs> Are you running uh moonshine in this tank? <laughs> He's it's running that, mud. It's, it's that freaking ethanol gas. Actually the rest of it's pretty clean. It's not bad. Alright, so Jay's ready to drop in the aeromotive fuel pump. Uh, it's supplied with a new O-ring. And the new uh, ring for the top here. And we're just making sure there's nothing weird in there. And it goes in one way only. Cause there's, okay. a, there's a little area in there that catches the fuel so you don't ever starve. And this is the return line, which if I can get this in there, get in there yeah. then I can probably drop the return line in. It's gotta be careful. I don't wanna break a wire. There we go. One more, there it is. Some, I think the older... Some of them do, can't you? Nice and tight. Here's our booties to go over the terminals, just like that. There we go, perfect, look at that. So, tell us why it's important to get this Panhard bar in the area you guys have gotten it with your guys' bracketry. Yeah, so we made sure to get it as long as possible. It just changes like the moment of inertia and like side how it side swings movement. and stuff like that. Yeah, the longer the better. And we also made sure to get it at a good height, mm -hmm. which is gonna control your roll center, which is really important in handling. Make sure we're not doing anything like snap over steer or something in the corners. Gotcha, cool. The car was painted by Spikes Performance and Refinishing in Ocala, Florida. Uh, they've done a couple of project cars for us in the past. And it's an interesting color because of the House of Color candy finish. You have a base and then you have the candy coat and then you're clear. So inside right now, it looks like a very dark burgundy, which pays homage to the original color, which was called medium Cabernet. But 
When you get it out in the sun, it's like a whole different color on the car. So Dean just hit it out of the park. Right now we're installing the Torcom Crossmember, so we're just making sure that all our measurements are good and where they need to be. We don't want anything too far forward, too far back. Checking the angles, making sure we're good. And where we want to be for the relation of the torque arm to the chassis. It looks like we're good to go. That's the guy that's supposed to be watching us. <laughs> Obviously, our Mustang is a factory five liter small block Ford. The popular thing these days is to put a Coyote in it, you know, five liter Coyote, uh, double overhead cam engine. We really didn't want to go that route. We wanted to keep it a push rod engine, kind of keep it true to its original nature. So when we reached out to Ford Performance, one of their newest crate engines is their X2302E. Essentially, it is the latest version of Ford Performance Parts' very popular X302 engine. As much as 340 horsepower sounds like fun, it can only be made more fun with a supercharger. And we gave our friends at Vortec a shout and said, look, we got this great little small block Ford from Ford Performance, what can you help us out with? And they're like, we got the perfect answer for you. Their V3 supercharger, it's their newest head unit, self-contained oiling system. It's got all the greatest features in it, but we had them option it with their Heritage gear set. What that does is it installs their old school straight cut gear system, which gives that pronounced blower whine, which was very popular in the late 80s and early 90s when Vortec first came on the Mustang scene. I don't know if this is gonna fit. <laughs> So while we're gonna have this kick-ass car with great suspension and braking and custom interior, when we turn that key, it's gonna sound just like 1990 all over again. Okay, so I'm just installing the supercharger belt tensioner pulley just so we can have it ready for mock-up. Um, we've actually omitted the uh, supercharger pulley up here. Uh, we'll install that at a later time when we're doing the accessory stripe belt. Okay, so for the last part, this is a very important part to our V3 installation is, is we need to remove the shipping plug, which is this here, and we need to install the actual vent itself. The uh, supercharger comes pre-filled with fluid. This is just a snug fit, don't over tighten. All right, so we finally got our sway bar brackets on there. Now we're gonna get the sway bar mounted up onto the axle, get everything hooked up, and get this guy set up properly. So we have these E356 plugs, or a gasket seat plug. The Diamond Fire electrode that you see on the spark plug provides edge-to-edge -edge spark discharge, which means it's gonna project further into the cylinder and give you more performance, better fuel economy, and lower emissions. So we get that seated and then we'll give it a quarter a turn with our wrench. Putting the gas tank back in now that we've changed the pump out. Let me connect this sucker right here. So we're coming to the end of day two. Fuel tanks back in. The guys from Maxim Motorsports are pretty much wrapped up. They're just doing mm -hmm. some final tweaks. Mark is almost done with the engine. He's only been working on that since eight this morning. So that is a good thing. Want to add anything? Sure. Uh, Vortec guys came in, uh, mounted up their uh, supercharger there. It looks nice. Bracketry worked out great. Yep. Um, actually, Mark, it just started and he's almost done, so he's been doing good. So with that being said, thank you for watching and tune in tomorrow. He's like, I don't live to live. <laughs> Dash eight. Dash eight. Alrighty, so it is day three of our Week to Wicked. Christian's back there wrapping up the fuel plumbing. He'll get it up to the engine bay where we can hook up the filter and the regulator. Next step's gonna be is getting the engine to the trans, getting that installed. That way we can measure for a drive shaft. Um, we got some motor mounts that are going on and a trans mount. And uh, lastly, not least, we are gonna do the exhaust system. Um, headers are already on, but we gotta do the exhaust system to the rear of the car. So not too terrible a day, but we do have some work ahead of us, so better get busy.
So right now we're just installing the rack back into the car. We're using our offset rack bushings to try and get the rack a little bit higher. Just improves bump steer and geometry. Um, so we're just gonna get these tightened down, get the rack in, and then we can start working on doing our alignment and getting our bump steer set and move forward with it. Be good to go with the suspension. We are attaching the fuel line feed <laughs> through the filter. It's gonna go up to the engine. So there's our 10 micron filter right there. We're using dash eight line, dash eight fittings. Make it look nice. This one much better. Smooth. The lack of Aflac is fantastic. Aflac. suspension gave us these uh, cool motor mounts. Just snug them up in there. So we finished up the alignment and now we've been adjusting the bump steer for a little bit and we're trying to get it dialed in so we don't have any toe change during bump and droop travel going down the road or going around a corner. So we're working on that right now and we're seeing where we're at and we're getting really close. So that's making us happy. Anything we can get close to zero on bump steer is a good day for us, so I'm gonna see where we're at now. It's looking like we're barely changing at all. From what we've been writing down, we're looking at like eight thousandth of an inch on our bump steer right now in this first inch of travel, so we should be good to go at this point. There we go. Can you hold the engine so it doesn't rock? When I take this off, there we go. Let me pull your tooth. I don't know if that's gonna work, my friend. The sheer size of it alone is too big. Unless you're real good. Bam, baby. Yeah. Yeah. So that went on. All right. And uh, I've got um, the new ARP bolts for it too. Yeah. They're all going in. Yeah. I'm not forcing them either. Alright, well if you got hands and eyes, you can help. Doesn't that qualify everyone here? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Everybody get over here. <laughs> Alright, okay. we can come back. Put it back. in position. Bring it back. Front slot, right? Yep. yep. Okay. okay I'm lined up. Yep. I'm lined, we're in. Yep, yep, we're in too. We gotta lift the car back up, so let's just get a piece of wood that we can just stick here to here. Just to keep the engine. Yeah. Are you down all the way on your side? Yeah, no, no. Now are you? Keep going. Jinga! Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have like a foot long piece of two by four? There you go. That hold? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Yep. All right. Unhook. You didn't slow us down. You just gave us a car. You want to just lay it on there? Three or four. Four. Oh my God. What? We're going to have to do a tunnel on this car. It's not going to fit. <laughs> Get the soles off. It got in there. Let me see that too. That's where it needs to come in. What? Um, well, don't we have to line up the torque converter holes? No, no we got to line up the dowels first. We can spin the torque converter once we get this all lined up. It's good. The but isn't there studs on the torque converter that have to go through oh, the... Oh, I didn't know. So I didn't really look at the converter. Um, keep going. Yeah, keep going. Converter keep going. has studs on it, and then you just put the nuts on once it goes through the flex plate, and we are trying to get the transmission to the bell housing. Uh, I mean, or the bell housing to the engine, and uh, get my night. we were fighting that because the studs were hitting the the uh, flex plate. So now that we now that we know what we're kind of doing, we'll give it another shot. So with Performance Automatics 4R70W Blue Chip Street Smart Transmission Package, 
we're able to install this transmission quickly and easily because it's almost a direct swap for the factory transmission. So obviously it's the first day on the job and uh, we pulled the pilot bearing out, but they have this little piece that's pushed into the crank. And I don't think that's gonna go through there. So we fought that for about 20 minutes and then realized how <laughs> stupid we were and pulled it back out. And got this piece out so now we can uh, put the tranny in for real. Okay, now we need this. There we go. There we go. We're in three of these. Okay. Jeep. Oh, wow. Imagine that. <laughs> we are about to install our transmount. Twist that for me, please. <laughs> okay. But if you're gonna go. Who's to come that way? Towards you? I mean, towards me? Yep. Okay, what am I looking for here? Tell us, what are you looking for? I don't know, man. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know why I'm working here. <laughs> God damn. So that's a safety loop for the drive shaft. Just in case it decides to take a boo boo, it won't go under your floor and straight on to your thighs or your legs and dismantle them. Go cut those bad boys. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Wait, what, what were you gonna say? Go ahead. I'm listening. I was, gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I was still gotta find the, uh, the uh, rubber hangers for you. Right now we're putting the exhaust pipe on. So we, we got the head pipes bolted to the headers. Now we're doing the catalytic converters. Then we'll do the X pipe. And then we'll continue on down with mufflers and uh, the up and over the rear end and hopefully can make it out the back sometime. That's not a promise. Since we do have aftermarket suspension, there. sometimes that doesn't work out that way. Hey Mark, we're done. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah, that's cool. So the pipes kit's a really nice kit and it is a direct fit for this Mustang. Unfortunately, with the suspension change in the rear, um, the access to the rear is a lot smaller and the tolerances are a lot tighter than a stock suspension. So not a big deal. We'll get the car to a suspension shop with the pipes uh, that were supplied in the kit. Maybe tweak them a little bit to get it up and over the rear end. But for now, we're just gonna turn it around before the rear end and uh, move on. On the seal, right? Right there, yep. 48 and an eight. It's on that table. Well, it's uh, the 4R70 is a 28 spline output shaft, right. and um, the Moser rear they built it with their optional 1350 uh, yoke. Okay. So it's it's simple for a drive shaft shop to all make. Right. We just got to get them the measurements, and they'll overnight it. So we're about to uh, drop the distributor in. We found top dead center, and uh, spin that mark. Spin that DJ. Perfect, so with these late model Ford five liter engines, generally you want the TFI or thick film ignition module pointing towards the air conditioning compressor. All right, so we are coming to end of day three. The guys are back there just wrapping up the plumbing on the fuel injection. Engine and trans are in the car. Drive shaft has been measured and the exhaust is completed. So with that being said, we're gonna get some rest. So thanks for watching and have a good night. Holding. Okay. Woo! Look at that. Can you do that again one more time, Jay? All right, so it's the start of day four of our week to Wicked Build, and we got some loose ends to you know wrap up this morning. The upper intake we got to put on. We got to do the linkage down below for the transmission, bleeding some brakes. But outside of that, uh, stereo install, AC install, we got the gauges to put in. So enough being said here, it's time to get back to work. Holding. Well, this is high-tech spray gasket. Just helps with uh, sealing the gasket on the manifolds and um, keeps your gasket in place so it doesn't move on you. That's kind of cool that it helps you, it guides you. Yeah. I like nothing but a good time. <laughs> you didn't phase him.
Damn, you got a good wire collection there. Here. There you go. Holy cow. <laughs> cool, thanks. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> whoppa, whoppa. Oh wait, it's a supercharged car. Wops, wops. I'm going to replace our well-used ignition coil with a brand new coil from Performance Distributors, the Screaming Demon. So now um, we'll get this cooler all mounted in. Uh, then we'll do the uh, condenser. We're gonna get it all mounted in. We'll film that, get all your wires tucked away. Can you guys leave the radiator out? That way we can run the lines to the condenser and uh, get access a little bit more room. Sure, no That'd problem. That'd be perfect. Well, looks good. We'll okay. lift the car up real quick and check those lines and you guys can take off. Sounds good. I'm gonna cut that off, weld ahead on there. I'm gonna go weld something up. You know we're in trouble when everybody's in here looking for something. You guys got what you need? We're looking. One out of four. <laughs> Yay! Yay! The linkage on the new transmission is much different than the one that was on the old transmission lane right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this down. I'm gonna take a quarter inch bolt, weld it on here. That way we can bring it in, thread that on there with a nylock or something. We'll be good to go. Sometimes when you only got a couple days to do this stuff, you gotta think outside the box. Right, oh yeah, I'm well right here. Oh, you jammed, uh... Well, you, yeah, you can't, once you weld that up, it's not gonna swivel any longer. No, no, I'm just saying uh, you jammed it in the slot by using this, yeah. this pinch bolt. Exactly. You like push the bolt against exactly. it. Exactly. Right. And then if you need to go up and put another one underneath, but I think we'll be fine there. Well, we're using one of SCT's big air 90 millimeter mass air meters, and we're coupling it with a Anderson Ford Performance power pipe. Power pipes are famous for making just a little bit more power with the Vortex Supercharger. So we're using their filter coupled to the SCT meter with this coupler here, and it'll come through the inner fender and feed lots of nice, cool air to the supercharger. So we're wrapping up day four. It's a little later in the night than uh, usual. We ran into a bunch of snags that kind of made us fall back into our goals for the day and uh, well we didn't get as much done as we wanted to it's gonna make for a long day tomorrow we're gonna come in early hopefully tackle a bunch of stuff hopefully nothing gets in our way and uh, we can wrap things up all right so it's the early morning of day five and we're trying to catch up for where we left off yesterday we were a little bit behind but with our great team I don't think that's gonna be an issue just finishing up a few things underneath the car so we can get the wheels on it, get it out front. TMI will be here early morning so they can start in the interior. We have a bunch of stuff to do under the hood in hopes trying to get this car fired up, driven out of the shop before the sun goes down for that first drive. So enough talking and back to working. So we're going to be installing our Dakota digital gauges soon. Uh, the VHX system is very complete and they really have it all thought out, including a way to plug off the factory speedo cable. So they include this nice little CNC machined aluminum plug that goes in the factory speed sensor. Yeah, so I'm just going to throw on the stock wheels. Um, TMI is going to be here shortly. We need to roll the car out here so we can open the doors and they can get to the interior. So this harness is coming from the bottom of the trans and I wired in all my wires over there which is neutral safety, um, backup lights, speed sensor. So now I'm just plugging this in 
And then we got another harness up here for all the other components in our handheld. Thought I'd plug that in before I uh, cinch it on the inner fender. Once you close it. One of the things we're tackling is uh, all the new components, condenser, dryer, and all the lines from Rock Auto for the AC system. So it's all plug and play. They all snap in, and uh, we're doing that now. And that way the AC system will just need to be charged afterwards. So far, so good. We've already got the rear seat installed on this Fox body. Installing the door panels right now. The cool thing about it is, is all of these parts are a simple replacement piece for your factory parts. They just simply bolt into the factory parts. So there's no modifications, there's nothing like that, it just bolts right in. But other than that, I think everything's going pretty good on this Fox body. Here we're getting the Be Cool radiator in with our modified single fan to get enough clearance. It's a dual speed fan, plenty of CFM for the application and it's gonna be tying into a PWM controller, which will modulate the speed and keep the amp draw at absolute minimum. Okay, so we're gonna throw in our uh, Odyssey Extreme Series battery. Well, huh? And uh, this will keep the car charged, cranking, and on the road. Literally a direct replacement. All right, we're about to throw in our Dakota digital gauges. You're not about to, you are doing it. Yeah, I'm doing it. And like always, one plug. connector in the rear. Bam. Okay. There we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't call me sticky fingers or nothing. I don't even know what that means. I really don't. How the freak am I gonna get this thing in there with the exhaust in the way? I didn't even think about that. Got it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oof, almost, I got that. Oh, you know what, we're gonna get Mark on this one. Mark, what measurements did you give him? Let's uh, do it, dude, for sure. Him? What? Did he give the drive shaft shop the dimensions? No, I emailed them to him. Yeah, but I wrote it down. Um, we're a little screwed right now. 48 and a half. You go tell me if that's 48 and a half. That's not in. Look, uh, it doesn't oh. matter. Did he give us the wrong one, you think? Blame me for that one. Uh, this isn't the new drive shaft. It's the one he sent us. Really? Yep. With all this shit on the end. That's what I'm yeah. saying. I wonder if he had, he did a repair. So how long you plan to keep a straight face? What? <laughs> 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 you know it's too well. You know we got you the first time when you walked over here. Well, I'm looking at him. I'm like, oh, there's freaking seal wear on the yoke. It looks, I was like, looks like you just pulled it out of the garbage can. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, it's not a blind, it's blind. All right, so just for a uh, initial uh, setup, we're gonna put about an inch of preload on each coil over. Should give us a good starting point for ride height, and we'll adjust from there. We're about three and a quarter from bottom on both, so good. So we're gonna put the cold air on, enters the uh, inner fender, that way you're not, you're not trapping all that motor heat inside the engine compartment, that's where the mass air flow sensor is. Cool. So our 1990 Fox Mustang Week to Wicked project is nearly 30 years old, and as such, both the interior and exterior were both completely worn out. So we used Daniel Carpenter restoration parts, in both of those locations. On the outside, front and rear bumper covers, body moldings and window trim, just to name a few pieces, all came from Daniel Carpenter. And on the interior, such things as the armrest pads, door sill plates, 
pedal pads and more were all used to bring the car back up to new for our Week to Wicked project. Check, man works good with that four performance engine. Dude, I know. Transmission shifts nice and tight. Yep. It, you know, it, 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 it's not a stock, it doesn't feel like a stock transmission. It feels like a little, it's got some performance to it. Yeah, I think so. We got our temperature first. Temperature looks pretty good, so that fan, that 180, fan man. Is kicking in. The you know what, dude, that I've noticed is that Eaton gear set, every time we've installed them, they're nice and quiet. That's good. Brakes work great. Yep. It sounds good too, those yeah. exhaust pipes. Listen to that thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> sounds good. Overdrive? Yeah. Yeah, dude, this thing's responsive. The steering's thing. responsive. Uh, I mean, everything Shifting's works good. good from the suspension back to the power of the car, to the supercharger or the way it ramps up. It's perfect. Bring this thing back to the shop. I'm happy with the initial drive, but we want to make oh, yeah. sure everything's cool. No leaks, but I think everything, I think we're good to go. I think so. We'll too. take this turn a little aggressive. No problem. Sweet. <laughs> 